Yo, Adam Saxon with Gynecube, and in this video, I want to introduce you to log analytics integration with Power BI. I'm super excited about this. You may have heard of this as Azure Monitor integration, but it's log analytics and being able to get tracing or diagnostic information from Power BI into log analytics for you to use. Let's dig in. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. Log analytics, Whew, what is this, Adam? Log analytics is actually an Azure service. So Azure log analytics, it's part of Azure Monitor. What this does is just a way to store logging information that can then be easily queried and then analyzed as part of diagnostic collection. The actual log analytics integration for Power BI is going to be a journey. This is a new preview that's available and as of the recording of this video, the initial item that's available with it is the analysis services trace information. So this is effectively like what you would get if you were to slap SQL profiler trace against analysis services or against the XMLA endpoint and premium. And so what this is doing is allowing you to take that trace information and just pump it into log analytics. So I don't need to run a profiler trace anymore. It allows me to shortcut the ability to just dump that information somewhere. So I don't need to deal with orchestration. I don't need to deal with cumbersome tools. It's just going to do it for me. I mentioned this preview and that AS trace information is coming first. This will be a journey. So there will be other items that will be added to this over time. So be sure to take a look at the release notes for information regarding this or the Power BI blog to stay up to date. But things that will be coming in the future, think of like the audit log information, maybe usage statistics, the premium capacity metrics. Those are all things that hopefully will land as part of this log analytics integration. So it can just get all that data just orchestrated into log analytics. And then once it's there, you can do whatever you want with it. You control the data retention period of the log analytics resource. Just know that there's potentially added cost as part of that. You've got to pay for that Azure service. There are other options to get this data. So don't feel like you have to go down this road and pay for log analytics. But again, you've got to deal with that orchestration. You've got to deal with that data collection. You're going to pay for resources somewhere. So just be mindful of that. I'll have some links down in the description below for more information as well. So check that out. And as I said, this is a preview. So so things will change as more work is done on this feature. So definitely stay tuned to the Power BI blog for more information. All right, enough of all this talking. Let's head over to my machine and actually look at this. Right, I'm going to walk through some of the initial setup. It's not super complicated, but there are some steps. In order for this to work, the Microsoft Insights resource provider has to be registered at the Azure subscription where the log analytics service is going to be. This is something your subscription owner is going to have to do. So under resource providers, you want to make sure this Microsoft Insights is registered there. Once that's done, you've got to go and create the log analytics resource itself. So I've, I've got two here. I'm going to look at the Power BI logs too, because that's not set up currently. The other one is. Once we're inside the actual log analytics, one thing we have to do is we have to add the Power BI service as a monitoring contributor to this. So we want to go to access control. I want to go to role assignments and we are going to add a role assignment here. So we're going to add the Power BI service itself. So this is not something you have to create. It will exist there. This is an actual Microsoft resource that's available and we want to add them as a monitoring contributor. So not regular contributor, they need to be at least a monitoring contributor. This is what allows the Power BI service from a diagnostic information to add that data into the log analytics resource itself. And so this uses the diagnostic infrastructure built into the Azure platform to orchestrate that data. So we're going to go ahead and save that. You have to be an owner of this resource to add this role configuration. So if you're not the owner of the resource, make sure you go to the admin or the owner of the subscription to do this for you. So that's all I have to do from the Azure piece of this. Now we're going to head over to the Power BI portal. This requires a couple things. First off, it has to be backed by either Power BI Premium, Premium per user, or a Power BI embedded resource. And so if it's not any of those items, the way it works as of the recording of this video is you cannot use the log analytics items with this. Let's go to the admin portal. The Power BI admin is going to have to enable something first. So if we go down to Azure connections, again, as this is previews, only workspace level logs are allowed. And I put a check in this box to make sure that workspace admins can 
go ahead and configure this. Hopefully there will be a tenant level log analytics permission that admins can set up for the entire tenant. For right now, only the workspace items are present. So we can't go grab tenant level, which would be everything. All right, then we wanna go over to our workspace. In my case, this is backed by premium per user. Also, this has to be the workspace V2. So if you're on the old classic workspace, this is not gonna work. Then what we're gonna go do as an admin of the workspace, I can go to settings and Azure connections, log analytics, and then I can connect to Azure. At this point, it's gonna go query out and see what I have access to. Important point here, whoever sets this up has to be the owner of the log analytics resource itself. So if you're the owner of that resource, you're good to go. It's gonna show up here and you're gonna allow it to work. If you're not the owner, you need to either have the actual owner of the resource set this up for you or have them temporarily add you as an owner to wire this up. And then once it's wired up, they can bring your access back down. So it's only needed for this step. I know it's a little confusing. In this case, I'm the owner of the resource. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna choose my subscription that this is on. And then I'm gonna choose the resource group. And then I will see the log analytics workspaces that are available. Again, I had two there. One thing to note, I already have this first one wired up to another workspace. As of the recording of this video, you're gonna hear me say that a lot. You can only have one Power BI workspace assigned to one log analytics workspace. Say if I'm the admin of four Power BI workspaces, I can't assign them all to the same log analytics workspace. Right now that's being actively blocked. That will hopefully be enabled as part of the preview. So stay tuned on that. So again, if I choose Power BI logs here, which is already set up on another workspace, it's going to give me an error saying we don't support it. So if you try it and it works, great. If not, we need another log analytics workspace and I'll choose logs to save it and then bam, we are connected. That's all you have to do. And then just start using your data sets and whatnot, and it will dump the data in there. Like a good cooking show, I already had this set up over on my AdventureWorks workspace itself, and I've been doing some activity. All right, so that's setting it up. Like I said, it's there's not a lot to it really, but just some things to consider as you're setting it up itself in terms of permissions and where things need to go. Check out the documentation if you're not sure. It'll walk you through those options. All right, so now that we've got this in place, we've got some data collected. What do we do? Do with it. A couple different things we can do. One, we could work on this directly in log analytics using what's called Custo queries, just query it directly. There is a Custo connector inside of Power BI Desktop, so you could use that to pull data. There's also a template report that's available that you can use to just get started and glean some information from that trace information. So you don't have to like create everything and reinvent the wheel. So let's look at both. I'm going to go into the one that I had set up and here I'm going to go down to logs and we'll see here that it's created some things. I've only got this from a workspace perspective. So I see my Power BI datasets workspace table. If the tenant information becomes available and you have all that set up, you'd see another table here called Power BI datasets tenant instead of just workspace. And in there, it's got all sorts of data. So this is not gonna be a tutorial of Custo queries, but one thing you can come through and there's just different queries that you can go ahead and run. If you're familiar with T-SQL, it's a similar structure, just kind of backwards, but you can see you've got a trace operations, event trace information, which is the actual trace. You've got the dataset name, the workspace name, so all of this is available for you. You can also see some things here. So let's look at log count per day for the last 30 days. So how many logs were actually generated by day? We, we can see an average query duration by day for the last 30 days. So we can actually see how we're performing and dig into that data, right? And this relates to interactive reports as well as refreshes. So all of this is available for you, direct query and import, just like running a profiler trace. So this is the Custo queries that we can play around and kind of explore the data. But let's go check out the report itself. Itself. This was a PBIT file. I've got it wired up in here. So this is bound to one of my log analytics items for a given workspace. I just imported all of this. So you've got full access to the data model that's there and all the data. So you can make your own report. I just published this to the service so we can play around. We can see top reports. So the report IDs themselves that are used. We can also see the data sets and some high level information of that. We can see refresh information, operations by segment. And then we can also see the operations by date and segments here. Obviously the 13th and 14th was heavy usage. There was some usage on the 15th, which is when I'm recording this, not a lot of information available there. You know, it's still early in the morning and there's drill through on a lot of items. Let's go through and take a look at some of this. I'm just going to go to engine activities and engine activities here. We can see again, we've got the capacity, the workspace, the data sets, and then the reports that are part of this causing different information we can see, you know, CPU time as part of this. We can see the CPU time count of operation. 
locations. If we come through, we can see that our query completed items, we see a lot of performance here. So I could right click, go to drill through and go to engine activity details. And we can actually see by time segment, what were those queries that were actually issued? And you can actually see the event text. So this is the DAX query that was actually ran. And you can see how long it was taking. Even from here on this actual query, I could right click and I could say drill through and then go to query detail. And here you would see sub related items. As of the recording of this video, the storage engine queries actually aren't present. Hopefully that will come soon as well. If this was a direct query operation, you'd see the direct query item here as well. In fact, let's go back and check that out. Okay, let's go to engine activities and I want to look at sales DQ and we want to go to query completed. I know that this one is direct query. So if we go to engine activity details, we can actually see these items. And then if I right click, go to drill through, go to query detail, bam, there's my direct query event that was sent as part of this DAX query that was sent from the visual. If I go to data set refreshes, got a nice little Gantt chart that will show us plotted items. Uh, if I go through here, we can look at a given refresh for my AdventureWorks database. We can actually see how long it took. And then I can right click, go to drill through, and then go to data set refresh details. And the details of this specific refresh here, there's a Gantt chart. I don't know if the Gantt chart custom visual will be used once it goes GA and whatnot. So this may change to some other type of visualization. I do like the Gantt chart though, but there's a lot of information here. And so you can dig into really what happened as part of this in terms of compression on columns, the actual data read from the data source, lots of information here that you can go explore what's going on with a refresh. Query statistics, we can go through again and, and look at breakdowns so we can see what's performing bad. Where can I go after to try and optimize things? This is a great way to drill into that information. You can also see user activities. As of the recording of this video, I, I've seen some other items that actually showed the users here. I don't know why this shows MT Authority system. Hopefully it's just a preview thing and that will be updated. In my case, I had actually like three different users going in. Looking forward to that to actually break down to see which users are actually doing the most on the given data sets and whatnot. And then error summaries, if there are errors, you can go through and try and take a look at some of that information. So here I could do drill through and go to error details and potentially get more information about it. I only had one error though, so there's not a whole lot to see here. Really excited to see more information come with this as well as additional capabilities inside of log analytics. So just stay tuned, like I said, definitely play around with this once you get it available and see if you can glean insights of your data sets. All right, I wanna hand it over to you. What do you think about this? Is this bananas? This is a allow you to actually dig into more information, let me know down in the comments below what you're excited about or, and or what you want to see. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.